Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Have you found it difficult to find that perfect locality boa to add to your collection? Do all of the dream boas you see online, like this beautiful Pacapa Peruvian, always seem to go to other buyers when you reach out to inquire to the breeder? Well, today I wanted to go over some basic rules for boa buyer etiquette. And I think if you follow these rules, you'll have a much better and smoother interaction with the boa sellers, and you'll be more likely to find those top-notch boas to add to your collection. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos about breeding boas, as well as regular updates on my boa breeding activities. I recently did a video entitled etiquette for boa sellers, where I provide some tips for boa sellers to make the whole interaction with potential boa buyers a little bit smoother. And today I wanted to do the same thing from the perspective of the boa buyer. So how to make the interactions better with the sellers and how to ensure that you're more likely to get those top-notch boas that you've been dreaming of. So as you probably know, locality boas are really hot right now, and it's definitely a seller's market. If you go to Morph Market or any of the other online classified sites, you'll see that about 90 to 95% of the boas available are Morph boas. And when there are nice locality boas available, they go really fast. So if you follow some of these tips, I believe you're more likely to get those great locality boas that you've been dreaming about adding to your collection. The first tip is don't be overly picky about the boa that you want for your collection. Now, of course, we all want really nice animals and we want to have the best animals in our collection. And that being said, there's a huge number of really high quality animals in captive collections these days. So there's a lot of great boas out there for you to pick from. So there's this idea that in any litter, there's, you know, maybe one or two like really great boas and maybe, you know, 15 or 20 kind of average ones and maybe a few below average. But that's not really the case. You know, most litters that I've seen, there might be one or two standout animals, but by and large, all of the animals are really nice. And I find that when the animals grow up a little bit, my order of preference might change. So I might see something in an animal that I missed before that just took a little bit of time for it to grow. I get a lot of people asking me for first choice of animals in my litters or for whole back quality animals, things like that. And, you know, number one, if it was a really a truly whole back quality animal, would it be being sold in the first place? And the other thing, as I mentioned, all of these animals in my, that I sell are really nice animals. So it's not like there's really going to be that much of a difference. The other thing that I've seen that kind of, um, surprises me is a lot of breeders will individually price animals and the, you know the price can vary anywhere from like 200 to over a thousand dollars in some cases and I look at the pictures and you know maybe the more expensive boas are a little bit nicer in some cases I don't even think they're nicer in some cases I would actually pick the boa that's less expensive it just looks nicer to me so there's a lot about individual preference when it comes to picking boas so um, there have been, you know, a number of people have reached out to me and they're thinking about buying a boa and they send me some pictures of ones they're considering. And in many cases, these are all really nice looking boas, great representatives of the locality. You know, they look nice to me. The sellers have a good reputation. The price is reasonable, but for some reason, they're just not they're liking the boa. Like, you know, unless they're blown away by the picture of the boa, they don't want to buy it. So what I would say is be a little more realistic in your expectations and don't be overly picky because odds are very, very good that when the boa comes, it's going to look a lot more better in person or in, in the flesh, so to speak, than it does in the picture. The second rule of boa buying etiquette is don't request too many pictures. So your boa seller should provide you with a few pictures that show a representation of the animal so you have a pretty good idea of what you're getting. And in some cases, it's nice to get pictures of the parents so you'll have an idea about the potential. 
but don't ask for dozens of pictures taken on all different types of light from all different angles and things like that. The truth is there's no way you can have a 100% representation of a boa based on pictures. You have to really see it in person. And so if the seller has provided some decent representative pictures, that's fine. You know, that should give you a good idea. And back in the day before the internet, people bought boas sight unseen. So they would just send money. They would have no idea exactly what the boa looked like. You know, it was just based on the reputation of the seller. And it worked fine and people, and generally speaking, were happy. So don't be overly picky about the pictures. Um, some cases, people, sellers, will provide representative pictures. So they might have a litter that they say looks all pretty similar, and they might show you representative pictures, but they can't provide individual pictures. And so that's usually fine. You know, if the seller has a good reputation, you can trust that you're going to like the boa that you get. When you think about taking pictures, it's, it takes a lot of time, and boas often don't cooperate very well for pictures. So to ask somebody to go and take more pictures, think about if you went to a professional photo studio, you probably would have to pay a few hundred dollars for a sitting just to take some pictures. So to really ask this about a boa seller uh, is a little unrealistic. In addition, uh, once you have your pictures, don't keep bugging the seller for more pictures. So I've gotten people that have bought boas from me and everything's all set, ready to go, and they're doing a payment plan, and they want me to send them update pictures like every week. The boas are really not gonna change enough week to week for it to make sense to send update pictures. So if you have a decent picture, just put some faith in the reader that they're gonna provide you with a boa that looks nice like the picture. The third rule of boa buying etiquette is don't lowball the price. So I found that there's really two main ways of pricing boas that people use. The first is they come up with this crazy inflated price, they throw it out there, and then they figure someone is gonna bargain them down, but they'll still get a pretty good decent price. This is kind of like a used car salesman. That's the you know approach that they would use. A lot of BOA breeders and sellers, myself included, we don't do that kind of BS. Basically, we set a price that's realistic, and this is the price that we'll sell the BOA for. In other words, if their price is below that, it makes more sense for us to hold on to the BOA. So basically, in other words, the prices really are not negotiable. So you should do your research on the online classified sites and really have a good idea about what similar BOAs are selling for. And if the price being asked is like really high compared to that, then maybe it makes sense to throw out an offer. But if the price is reasonable, I would say that it's usually a bad idea to lowball a breeder. Another thing to consider is that just because there is a boa of the same type available from another seller, doesn't mean that it's representative or that it's similar to that boa. And the boa that you're interested in might be higher priced for a number of reasons. It might be better quality. It might be a captive bred example versus a wild caught. It might be um, just something special about the bloodline. So do your research and if the price seems reasonable, you can expect that that's the price that you're gonna pay for that boa. The fourth rule of boa buying etiquette is do your research on the husbandry of the particular animal before you buy the boa. And don't expect the breeder or seller to give you a whole crash course in exactly how you're going to care for the animal. You should also ask any relevant questions about the boa or the sales arrangement before initiating the sale. So once you paid for the boa, it's really not realistic or fair to make additional expectations onto the part of the seller. One thing that I get asked a lot, and I, I know a lot of breeders get asked this, is about the temperament of the boa and wanting some kind of guarantee that the boa has a good temperament or something like that. So the truth is that these are, most of the boas being sold are baby boas, which are only a few months old. And breeders will often have dozens or even hundreds of these babies. So they can't really develop an individual relationship with each and understand their temperament or their emotional needs or anything like that. 
So, you know, of course we take the best care possible with our babies, but we don't really get to know them on, you know, an individual basis. So in general, the temperament of a certain type of boa will have general trends. And I actually did a video entitled um, Behavior of Locality Boas by Locality. So check that out if you want to learn more about general trends of temperament among types of boas. But the breeders can't really guarantee that an individual animal has a certain temperament. And by and large, almost all of the boas that I've dealt with, they're really not aggressive and they generally don't bite. And you know, if I do have a boa that's really aggressive, I'll tell the potential buyer that. Um, but in general, sellers cannot guarantee that their boa is going to have a certain set type of temperament. The fifth rule of boa buying etiquette is don't rush the breeder to sell the boas when they're too young and they're not properly established. So in general, the youngest age that a boa should be sold is about one and a half to two months after it's had at least three or four meals and it's established and the, the breeder can guarantee that there's no uh, health problems with that particular animal. So don't try to push a breeder to sell you a boa at a younger age. I've heard about breeders that did sell boas at too young of an age before they were properly established. And in some cases, the animals didn't end up surviving because they weren't feeding yet. And in the hands of a beginner hobbyist that doesn't really have experience getting a boa feeding, the animal it didn't end up making it. The sixth rule of boa buying etiquette is to make sure you understand the sales terms of the seller. Make sure you ask ahead of time what uh, their sales policy are, what types of payments are accepted, what their guarantee is, if they do payment plans, things like that. And if you do have a payment plan where you might put down 25% as a deposit and then pay the rest off in monthly installments, something like that, do not expect a refund of your deposit if you back out because the breeder has taken that animal off of the market for you and they're taking care of it and feeding it uh, while you have the time to acquire the money to pay it off. So it's not really fair to expect that the seller is going to refund your deposit. The last rule of boa buying etiquette concerns the shipping of the animal. So make sure that you stay in very close communication with your breeder and you know exactly when the animal is going to be shipped out. So make it explicitly clear that you're available on let's say Thursday, June 14th to accept a shipment, but you're not going to be available Monday, the following Monday or something like that. Provide your seller with all of your relevant contact information, your shipping address, your email, your phone number, etc. And if you'd like the animal shipped to a FedEx ship center for pickup, let the seller know that. A lot of sellers prefer to have the animal picked up rather than to risk it being on a FedEx truck delivered to your home. Also understand that there are certain weather conditions that snakes cannot be shipped under if it's too cold or if it's too hot. So depending on where you live, there might be a delay of several months in some cases until the weather is suitable for shipping your boa. So just be really patient and don't pressure your seller to ship in inappropriate weather conditions because if something happens to the animal en route and the animal ends up dying or being harmed, that's on them, that's not on you. Once the package arrives, be sure that you open it up as soon as possible and do a thorough inspection of the package and the animal uh, and see if there's any issues and you should reach out to the seller as soon as possible just let them know that the boa made it if it looks okay if there's any issues um, and if there are any problems make sure that you let the boa breeder know as soon as possible make it very clear um, what your issues are and you know see what they say so finally, you should keep in touch with the boa breeders. Boa breeders really appreciate it if they see pictures of their babies as they grow up. I really you know, get a great sense of satisfaction when I see a picture on Facebook and I recognize that particular animal that I bred you know, a few years ago and I can see how it's blossoming into this beautiful animal. Um, so that really makes us breeders super happy. That's really why we do this is to see these amazing animals 
develop into you know, stunning specimens in people's boa collections. The other great thing about keeping in touch with the breeders is sometimes you can get an inside scoop on the types of projects they're working on and what types of animals they're expecting. And you can sometimes get first pick and you can have an in on getting the animals that sell out super quick uh, in case you're having difficulty finding a certain type of boa. So always keep in touch with your breeder friends and let them know how their babies are doing. So I'm going to end the video by showing you guys this holdback Suriname True Red Tail Boa female. This is a female that was born here in 2016. She's from the Prometheus bloodline. And this is, you know, one of my favorites from the litter. Just a really awesome animal. Um, just beautiful, beautiful animal. You can see how well formed her saddles are. Her mother is actually from the Florida Red Tails bloodline and she has kind of more of the shape of the peak saddles from her mother, but she has the amazing high contrast from her father Prometheus, as well as the super long, you know, really nice red tail, just a amazing boa. Um, she's also got a lot of pinks in her sides. You know, her dorsal coloration is a little darker, but lots of nice pink in her sides and just a super chill animal. So this particular red tail, she doesn't squeeze really hard like a lot of red tails. They just are kind of insecure and they gotta cut off the circulation in your hand. You know, she holds on firmly, but she doesn't you know, really overpower me, so to speak. Um, just a great animal. Beautiful, beautiful animal. You can see all the beautiful speckling in her belly. Just a top notch, true red tail boa. This one probably is a few years away from breeding. She's growing nice and slow. I'm not going to rush her. Uh, and I really like this animal. I, you know, breeding them is somewhat of a risk. This one, I'm not even sure if I'm going to breed her. I just like her so much that I don't want to put her at any kind of risk and just really enjoy her as a beautiful, outstanding true red tail boa. So I hope this episode was helpful and you got some useful tips. As always, reach out to me with any questions that you may have about boas and breeding them in captivity. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.